How will a diet cola on a pension affect retirement plans for Joe and Barb in Tulsa? Percy in South Carolina has a pension too. He's timing the market, but should he change his investing strategy as he approaches retirement? That's today on Your Money, Your Wealth podcast number 445. Plus, Michael in Virginia needs ideas to fund a custodial Roth IRA for his three-year-old and two-month-old kids, and Rocco in NYC catches Big Al on capital gains exclusions. But first, will scary future events mean Michelle in San Diego will have to pay more tax and the highest possible Medicare premiums? I'm producer Andy Last, and here are the hosts of Your Money, Your Wealth, Joy Anderson CFP and Big Al Clopine CPA. Hey guys, I've been uh, reading investment magazines for quite a while, but recently found your podcast, Reading Investment Magazines. That's a really fun hobby. Yeah, is that what you do on weekends? (laughs) Uh, Working through uh, the massive rove of fantastic episodes. Love it. Gave you five stars. Wow. Wow. All right. Fantastic. I'm a lightweight investor relative to what I've heard on your listener questions, but here goes. Michelle here turning 67 in September, single, never married. No family, no debt, dog lover, chocolate lover. I drink coffee, seltzer, and hearts, a cider. Boring, I guess. I don't think so. I don't think that's boring at all. I drive a 2017 convertible Mustang. Oh, big no, ass. that's cool. I, I had a 2004 red convertible. <laughs> uh, that may redeem me in part um, from the boring drinking. All yeah, right. Does. Did you hear Al's response? He was excited. Was. Yeah, totally. Oh, my San Diego condo. Uh, bought it in 2020, stopped working, uh, social scientist, okay, 2015, as the research funding stream was drying up from my area. Uh, no pension, but walked away with a nice 403B. I converted to a rollover IRA, except for $270,000, I left in a guaranteed 3.5% return. I am not planning on taking Social Security until I have to. Other assets, 600000 Cash and CDs, money markets currently returning four and a half to five percent. Eight hundred seventy-five thousand dollars in taxable accounts, seven hundred ninety-five thousand in a traditional IRA, and four hundred sixty-five thousand dollars in a Roth. Dude, Michelle's a player. Well, Dude. so I just added. What are you talking about that, lightweight? I know investor. that's she's that's a, three million dollars. She's a big baller. You know what? Let me be very clear to our listeners: three hundred thousand is a lot of money to me. Right. And so it doesn't really matter how much you have. Exactly. It's what you're trying to do with the money. And then we can come up with a strategy or a spitball to figure That's out, right. all right, do you have enough to do what you want to do? You know, some people have a big fat pension and 100000 and they've got more money than they ever need. Right. Uh, all right. The above is invested in stocks, ETFs, and mutual funds, mostly index fund, domestic and international, with a smattering of tax-exempt bond funds in a taxable account, as well as small caps. Value and mid cap. Wow, she does read investment magazines. She's, she's got all the terms down. <laughs> uh, their vocabulary is top shelf. It's good. Uh, the traditional and Roth IRAs um, are invested in similar vehicles, except that I'm tilting the tax deferred ones towards more income pr- uh, production where the taxable is more growth. I'm in a 24% tax bracket with gross income of 130, 170, depending on the mutual fund capital gains declared at the very end of the year. So it's hard to plan very well. Currently moving gradually to ETFs in the taxable account. Got it. Average annual expenses for the past three years is $115,000. 40 plus K of that is taxes. Okay. So 115,000 is what she wants to live off, but that's, inclusive of taxes yeah that's what i read too so i guess that means other expenses are 75k 75 plus 40 okay including twelve thousand dollars property tax other growing expenses in insurance healthcare, home car i've been doing annual roth conversions of about fifty thousand dollars since 2015 and that's of course pushing up my taxes as well most recently my medicare premium now two scary events are looming in the not so distant future, I'll have to start taking Social Security, estimated at thirty-eight hundred dollars a month, three years. Then three years later, at seventy-three, I'll have to start taking my RMDs, unless they push it off again. As per above, current amount will that will be subject to that is a million bucks, two hundred seventy plus seven ninety-five. I fear I'm looking 
at a future of paying even more taxes than I do now. Paying top Medicare premium, and I don't like that picture. Am I missing something? Is there a strategy? Can I do something? Any wisdom? Thank you, guys. All right. That was uh, Michelle from right here. San Diego. San Diego. Yeah. Um, okay. Not a lightweight. No. She's a heavyweight. No, I'm very impressed, Michelle. So first of all, you got a lot of money. You drive a convertible Mustang. You like you like hard <laughs> cider. It's like we're about the same age, Woody. Wow. Although I am married. Oh man, he's like wow. <laughs> it sounds like my I'm just wife dreaming. All right, so let's see what 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 can she do? First of all, eight hundred seventy five in a taxable account, so she gets these mutual fund distributions. So it doesn't seem like she's living off of any of these dollars. So she's she's switching these over to ETFs, which I I think is the smart play uh, because they're more tax efficient, and so that could get. She, she's trying to. Take money out the 1040 because she sees, all right, I'm going to receive Social Security. I have the pen, or um, these other dollars that are kicking out. Right. And I might be in a higher tax bracket once my RMDs hit than I today. Right. Yeah. So to follow up on that, so with, with all with a lot of cash uh, as well as uh, taxable accounts, I think first step is take a look at how they're invested. They may not be the most tax efficient investments. You can invest in things that are more growth oriented or muni bonds to take that income off your return. But she's retired, correct? Yeah, but she's got no pension. But how is she in the 24% tax bracket? Well, she says her income is 130 to 170. Depending on the mutual fund cap gains. I, I'm just thinking it, something doesn't quite add up. I mean, well, there's four. Four and a half to five percent income on six hundred thousand cash. There's taxable accounts. Maybe she's getting something from the four hundred three b. Well, she's doing a fifty thousand dollar conversion. Yeah, right, right. So, so I, but the four hundred three b is tax deferred. She's making yeah. fifty thousand dollar conversion. She's got twenty four, twenty five thousand dollars, I guess, in interest. Right, and then another. A lot in the taxable. It doesn't seem like very eight hundred seventy-five grand kicking out that much. It can't be. Yeah. So I think we're missing something here. But I guess that's the first thing I'd look at is is are you invested tax efficiently in your brokerage accounts? She she has to look at doing more conversions. Totally agree because give everything that you've said, your income's going up. There's no question because if if everything's the same, now you've got RMD. Uh, and you've got Social Security. At twenty, She'll be in the 28% tax bracket. Could be, yeah. Um, so you definitely want to make... Convert the, to the top of the 24 uh, anyway. Right. And that's a big bracket. It, it is a big bracket. And Michelle, it's probably bigger than you think because your capital gain income will sit on, will top, sit of on top of it. So you kind of... You kind of calculate your taxable income without capital gains. And for a single person, you can go up to about $182,000 uh, of taxable income, which is after your $13,000 standard deduction, right? So that, you know, call it 195, almost 200,000 of income, uh, of ordinary income. And then your capital gains sit on top of that, which are taxed at 15%. So you may have more room than you think. Um, I don't know. Would you look at munis? I, I'd like to know what she's invested in. It seems like the income's way too high. But so. let's say the 600 in cash. It do, doesn't seem like she needs a ton of cash reserves. No. Maybe you look at a, you, you look at the tax equivalent yield on 4.5%, 24% tax bracket, state of California, 10. Yeah, right. Can you get maybe 3.5%, yeah. 4% close to that in a muni bond portfolio that's yeah. tax free? Been a while since I looked, but that wouldn't surprise me. So, um, yeah, we would need to look at the tax return a little bit more, but I, right. I think she's doing things great. If I, she I can continue too. to convert, convert to the top of the 24% tax bracket, that's going to reduce the RMDs, um, slowly get the, the mutual funds and the ETFs, be a little bit more tax efficient. Right. Take a look at the interest that's kicking out of your CDs and uh, money market accounts, and maybe you can convert that maybe a little bit more right. tax-free. Or hold more of it towards growth, depending on really what your tax or, or your your cash needs are. So yeah, but, um, but the conversions do affect Medicare premiums, and that's but you're going to have a problem with Medicare premiums regardless all, all the way. So it's right. not no no difference. All right, thanks, Michelle. 
With the money you've got saved right now, at what age would you be able to retire? 65, 70, never? For many Americans, our financial health barely has a pulse and the condition is getting worse. The doctors are in the house in Retirement Rescue Plan. It's the latest episode of Your Money, Your Wealth TV. Watch it in the podcast show notes and make sure you download the free Companion Retirement Rescue Guide. It's only available for a limited time, so download it before this Friday. Revive your retirement plan and go from just barely surviving to thriving. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your favorite podcast app to go to the show notes. You'll see the TV show and the guide right before the episode transcript. To get a retirement spitball analysis of your own, or if you've got money questions, click Ask Joe and Al on air in the podcast show notes and send them on in. Hi, Andy, Joe, and Big Al. Love your show. Longtime listener, Richard here, 62, Yahweh, spouse 59. I don't know what the A says. I don't know either. Years of age. No. Oh. Okay. We Instead our, of yo. And <laughs> North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. No cool. mortgage, no debt. I have $34,000 per year pension for life uh, with the COLA. A chunk of it goes to insurance taxes, et cetera, with about $20,000 per year left. After deductions to spend, have about $1.3 million between the following accounts. 250 Roth, 950 IRA, 31 brokerage. $135,000 in inherited IRA that's taking a $6,000 per year RMD. Uh, we also have about $160,000 in cash. Okay, investment breakdown. Got a little 1% in cash, 1% international bonds. Huge exposure there. Right? Yep, yep. U.S. bonds, 37.6. International stocks, 13.6. Uh, very precise. <laughs> it is. U.S. stocks, 14.6%. Alternatives, 1.7%. Unclassified, 0.7%. Best guess, total stocks to bond is about 62% to 38%. Yeah, perfect. So next time, just say 60-40. Good enough. We're good. <laughs> well, I don't have Roth accounts. I do have my Roth accounts a bit more aggressive at around 80% stocks. Um, like, I'm like it? Yeah, I'm assuming I won't have to tap into them for at least 15 years. I know I'm over-invested in U.S. bonds in my G fund, uh, that's in the TSP, and plan to move more into stocks as I convert to Roth. I have used the G fund as a buffer against the bad market. When the market goes down, I tend to push some into that S&P 500 funds, and when it appears overheated, I put about 5% into bonds. Oh, he's a timer. Yeah. He knows when it's overvalued. He and, sure does. <laughs> no, he knows he should, when it's undervalued. Join our investment he team. He should. We got a little seat open in the <laughs> old investment console. <laughs> Just sit right there next to Big Al. That's right. Uh, he's trying to stay in that 12% tax bracket while it lasts. Uh, we probably spent around $80,000 a year before taxes with a chunk of it, non-essential spending, dinner out, grandkids, birthdays, et cetera. Current marginal taxes are about 12% federal, 7% state. So roughly total spending with taxes is around $90,000 per year with personal exemptions in after effective tax rate in state taking into account. All right. At 67, probably get $31,000 a year from Social Security and my wife will get around 15. My questions are as follows. How do the numbers above look as far as being able to afford retirement? Okay. How should I change up the strategy as far as investing or reinvesting the funds I have and the cash available? Okay. All right. How should I convert each year to Roth and be most tax efficient? I drive a 2017 Thunderbird. Rarely drink, but like my 18-year-old Glenn Levitt. Ooh, oh, scotch. Thanks in advance. Percy from South Carolina. All right. Percy, I think, uh, let's see. You did some math there, Big Al? Yeah, this looks fine, Percy. So you've got, let's just, well, I use your $90,000 spending and your 34000 pension for life. So 90 minus 34 is 56000 mm -hmm. right? That's the need. Divide that into a million three fifty. That's a 4.1 distribution rate. Pretty close. That's not including Social Security, right? Correct. Okay. And then at age 70 with Social Security, um, or actually that's 67, with Social Security, 
uh, now it's a twenty five thousand dollars shortfall. I haven't I haven't done inflation. This is just back of the envelope, but it's a one point nine percent distribution rate, which is plenty of cushion here. So when we're talking distribution rates, and this is where everyone should be taking a look at it. It's just you add up your total assets, and then you find out what your shortfall is. And Percy's situation is that he's got a pension. So he wants to spend a hundred grand and he's got a fifty thousand dollar pension. Hypothetically, I yeah, forget yeah. what the numbers are. Sure. But he needs fifty thousand dollars from the portfolio. So you would just divide what the need is into the total value of your portfolio, and then that is what is called a distribution rate. So that is how much you're distributing from the overall portfolio. So you want to be in certain ranges depending on your age. And so we like to be under probably, you know, four percent is kind of the general rule, but you know, today. It's probably three, three and a half. And Percy's at like close to one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, two, but still it, it's, and, and so, and the point is, even though we want you to be below four and at age 62, maybe you ought to be three and a half. Right. But if you're going to be at a low distribution rate later because of social security, I'm not that concerned. Right. You can spend a little bit more because you're going to spend less because that the, the social security is going to increase your fixed income. Correct. Right. And so when you look at conversion strategy, I think the allocation is fine. I think you're 60, 40, you've got some international exposure, you've got some U.S. exposure, right? He's doing some asset location. He's a little bit more aggressive in his Roth IRA. He doesn't need to touch the Roth. So, yeah, you want to grow that a little bit more heavy, right? And be a little bit more aggressive, I should say. Um, Roth conversions, let's go, I don't know, top of – well, he says he's in a 12% bracket. Cert At least max out the 12. Cert certainly do that. That's kind of a no-brainer. But it sounds like that's probably the right bracket anyway, based upon what future income is going to be. So I probably wouldn't go above that necessarily. So yeah, no, I think uh, I think this is good. And then just to kind of maybe put a bow on this distribution rate. So uh, take your spending. Subtract your fixed income. So in this case, spending is ninety thousand. Fixed income is a pension of thirty-four thousand. So that leaves fifty-six thousand. That's the shortfall. Now divide the shortfall into your liquid investment assets, not your home and all that. Your your and if you have rentals, then that's fixed income. Right. Subtract so that out. Right. Uh, and so we got fifty-six thousand. We divide it into a million three fifty. Got four point one percent. So that's pretty close to where we want uh, Percy to be. But then at 67, when he takes Social Security, there's another 31,000 of income. And of course, to do this right, you do inflation and all that, but just you know, just quick numbers, 90,000 now minus the pension minus Social Security, shortfall is 25,000. That's a 1.9% distribution rate. That's very, very, very good. And so that that's how you can, in many cases, answer the question yourself just by doing that mathematics. Right. I, I would stop timing the market. Rebalance is a better way to do this, right? Yeah. So you want a certain percentage in stocks and bonds, 60-40. Let's just keep it simple. So if the stocks are overvalued or overheated, you're probably going to have more than 60%. So then you sell the stocks and you buy bonds. Right, because you want to keep that allocation 60 40. Yeah, you, sell, you, you don't go on your gut, you go on the percentages. Yeah, you sell enough stock to get to 60%, or stocks go down, you buy enough stock to get back to 60. Forces you to buy and sell at the right time. All right, thanks for the question. I uh, got good morning, Joe and Barb from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I appreciate the podcast, which I started listening to recently. Got a lot of recent listeners. Yeah, brand new. Which is brand new. And I've got two cousins in T Tulsa. I wonder if Joe and Barb knew them. Probably not. I'll have fun listening to many dozens of episodes I missed up until now. Jeez, you're not missing much. <laughs> Seriously, it's the same. Just rinse and repeat. Um, I drive a 2023 Ford Maverick hybrid. My lovely lady drives a 2018 Honda Fit. Tea and coffee are as exciting as it gets for us. Okay. All right. Good enough. Mary, 55 years old. My wife excited Oh, exited the uh, workforce five years ago. I need to get glasses, man, or something. <laughs> excited. I, it was like exited, and I said excited. Am yeah. I, well, she might have excited her workplace as well. She just, yeah, she might have got excited. I would say, up. in your defense, it's there's a close words. <laughs> Sorry, big, thanks, Big Al. Uh, I I am a federal employee eligible to retire soon and intended to punch out at the end of 2024 after 38 years of service. My first pension will be forty one thousand dollars. After SBP deduction, 
uh, but we'll have no cola until the first January after my 62nd birthday. So that's six missed colas. Uh, then the pension gets a diet cola from then on. <laughs> the diet cola basically seems uh, to mean each year the potential um, it, what does that exist to receive up to one percent less with the inflation cola, which is awarded to the Social Security recipients. Okay. So it's, it's a little mouthful. <laughs> it is. Uh, for retirement age until 62, I will get the first supplement that will equal approximately $22,000 a year. Oh, man. This is long. Oh, <laughs> Dude, boy. <laughs> hope, hope he just kind of shortens his <laughs> stuff up a little bit. <laughs> yes. All right. I have a military reserve cola pension. He loves the word cola. I think I've said cola like 45 <laughs> times, and we're only kind of a quarter way through this. Thing. Yeah, by the way, that's cost of living adjustment. And we've got diet colas, we've got regular <laughs> colas, we've got no colas. <laughs> oh, boy. And then we got a cola that's up to the Social Security, half a cola. <laughs> yeah. I've never talked so much about sodas before. So I will have a military reserve cola pension that begins at age 60. That will equate to $12,000 a year. At the end of the next year, when I retire, we'll have $1 million between my TSP, my wife's IRA. About $200,000 will be robbed in 860 pre-tax. All right. My Social Security, uh, which I plan to take at age 70, um, is indicated to be $47,000, but I always cautiously consider only 75% of this amount. Thanks, Congress. Uh, which is $35,000. My wife is eligible for $14,000. Same 25% haircut. This scenario seems difficult to put into any traditional calculator because of the cola of my pension from the federal government. Oh, boy. I mean... I'm the... <laughs> That's all good. Yeah, he's just like I, I think I, he's gonna be just fine. I I'm almost positive. I I can already tell you he'll be fine because uh, I did some math. Okay, best I can see is that first six missed colas devalues the pension buying power from forty one thousand dollars to approximately forty thousand nine hundred dollars. <laughs> This is like spot on. Oh my god, this guy! It, I wonder how many spreadsheets he has. We, you know, there's oh, tons of them. He's like, trying to do a cola on each one, uh, exactly, and he's just running it up. It's uh, like, it's like, wait a minute, I, math isn't right. I just can't get this right. I'm <laughs> off by thirty-seven cents. Uh, the six missed colas devalues my pension to forty-one thousand to approximately thirty-four thousand dollars during the first six years, assuming a three percent inflation rate. Further. The thirty-four thousand is devalued over thirty years, age ninety-two to twenty-five thousand. If you consider a cola that is one percent under real inflation, <laughs> my stretch goal for a budget retirement is a hundred thousand dollars per year. But we have been consistently living at eighty-five thousand dollars. Home is mortgage-free and multiple avenues of health care coverage through military federal retirement that will keep the health care costs from retirement consistent with what I'm experiencing while employed. Time frame for retirement. Oh you want to read all that? Nah. So I'll just summarize. Uh, he's got in. He's got shortfalls for, for fifty-seven to sixty, sixty-one to sixty-two, sixty-three to seventy, and seventy to seventy-two, which I will respond to in one second. So he's he's mapped this thing out. Yeah, probably multiple times. Yeah, and then he's got colas and half colas and multiple colas and right. diet colas. It makes it does make it more complicated. <laughs> it's so uh, he's got some gaps, and he's like, "All right, well, what's your thoughts?" Can I can I retire? I think the answer is yes. I think the answer is yes too. So he's got fifty thousand dollars. Let's just call it round numbers. Yeah. Dude, let's say he doesn't get a cola. <laughs> I'm gonna take his guy. This, no is, cola. this is cola. This is Coke Zero. <laughs> yeah, this is Coke Zero. All right. Got it. So he's done. He's got a million bucks. Right. He's got and he's got all this income. He's got a ton of fixed income. He's yeah. got a military pension. He's got a first pension. He's going to receive Social Security. He only wants to spend 100 but he's actually only spending 85 Yeah. So his fixed can... income without a COLA is going to cover most of his fixed income. Agreed. So here, to, to put proof to this, I just did that distribution rate at these different periods, 57 to 60, four years, 3.4%. Not bad. Maybe a little high. Maybe you want it 3% if there's not, no other income. But fine in this situation. But 61 to 62, his distribution rate's 2.8%. Looks okay. good. 
63 to 70, it inches up a bit. It's about 5%. However, 70 to 92, it goes down to 1.3%. Now, I'm, this is just spitballing. I have not put this into a, into a software, but I'm pretty sure this is going to work out pretty good. You know what we got to do with Joe and Barb? They got to go to what, our new little um, software gadget. That's, EasyRetirement.com. Yeah, we, E-A-S-I we, retirement.com. Yeah, we, we got this little pilot. We do. Joe and Barb. Joe's going to love this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Easy Retirement, is that what it's called? Yeah. With just, an E-A-S-I. Yes. Put down, put down the show notes. Yeah. And, and Joe, give it a whirl. See if that helps you. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It's probably not. Because it's, this is like a five-minute financial plan. This guy needs a well, wants a, a full double-decker industrial. I sort of agree with you, Joe. Never mind. Don't go there. <laughs> if you want to try our new pilot program, go to easyretirement.com. That's E-A-S-I, retirement.com. And take a couple of minutes to plug in your income, savings, and expenses and see where you stand on the path to retirement. It's a quick, easy, and free way to find out how likely you are to run out of money in retirement. E-A-S-I stands for Education, Assessment, Strategy, Implementation. These are the building blocks of a sound retirement plan. You've already got the education part. You're listening to YMYW. Next, you need to assess your financial wellness. So go to easyretirement.com and pick either the quick two-minute path or the comprehensive eight-minute path, and the free retirement calculator will help you map out your next step, your strategy. Play with the numbers right there in the Easy Retirement Calculator and see instantly how, say, just working one year longer or taking Social Security just one year later could change your entire retirement plan. Start calculating your free retirement plan now at Easy retirement.com that's e-a-s-i retirement.com try out the new pilot program let us know what you think we'd love to hear from you hey joe and al i'm a big fan i've been listening to your podcast for the last three years or so 35 years old married for the last five and they have two kids three years old in two months got it all right i'm looking into open up a custodial roth ira for my kids or are there any pros and cons to call out well First of all, are they they're, child they're, actors? They're a little young, but let's let's go on. All right. My big question is, since they are young, how do you report any earned income? I have a rental unit um, and could employ them to do some cleaning service or something like that. You have a two-month-old? <laughs> do I, can't even crawl yet? <laughs> put, your... put a little diaper on. When you do crawl, then we'll pick up some dust. Yeah, I told you to clean the bathroom. <laughs> You get it over to that rental house yet? <laughs> Does, uh, how about a three-year-old? Yeah, I'm a t- think a three-year-old. Could... <laughs> it's called child labor laws. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they got, this guy's thinking he's living back in the twenties. <laughs> it's like, Dad, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I'm gonna go play with my dolls. Uh, yeah, you could videotape her and put her on YouTube. <laughs> See if you, you see if she can be an influencer. <laughs> uh, I have a daughter who's almost three, um, and a two month year old, um, and looking to get the two set up. I already have five twenty nine plans in a savings account, uh, so want to add on. I've heard of this loophole work, uh, but not sure logistically how to implement it, especially when I would report taxes year in and year out. Any insight would be appreciated. Thanks. Ah, uh, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, uh, and this is Michael, Virginia. Uh, Michael, I'd I'd wait till it it has to pass the smell test, right? Would a person normally employ a two month old to do cleaning? <laughs> Even a three year old? That's quite a stretch. <laughs> I mean, you got young kids. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we got a job opening here. <laughs> We're looking for a two month old. <laughs> <laughs> so would Benjamin would he do maintenance around the house and oh, clean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, washes my car. <laughs> oh, we got. I, I pay him six thousand dollars for car wash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my I goodness. think that's a bit of a stretch, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like your thinking, though. Oh. Let's just let's wait a few more years till it's at least it's it can pass some kind of smell test. Oh God, um, that's aggressive. It's a little aggressive. <laughs> it is. Uh, well, I like the I like the thinking. Wow, Rocco from New York City, dearest YMYW Titans. Wow, 
You guys are the absolute most inspiring workout podcast for a 40-something husband and father of one. Wow, workout I've, podcast. I've never heard that. Yeah, keep grinding. Uh, trying to focus on the future. All right, he's getting dialed in. You got to get, yeah. you know, some things work you know, for Get all inspired. Yeah. I believe one of you said on a podcast that in order to qualify for the full $500,000 capital gain exclusion on the sale of a principal residence, both members of a married couple had to be on the title. That was news to me, and <laughs> online sources seem to be contradicting it. Is this true? How could Big Al be wrong? Uh, Rocco, um, thanks for educating me. You are right. I had learned years ago that both spouses had to be on title. Either I learned that wrong 30 years ago, or it changed and I wasn't paying attention. You are exactly right. So let me read this from the Journal of Accountancy, which was written in 2002. So apparently I'm a little behind <laughs> <laughs> What's your CE credits? Yeah. Apparently they're off. Um, okay. The maximum gain exclusion for an individual taxpayer is 250000 Taxpayers who jointly own a principal residence but separately file returns may do 250 gain each. A husband and wife who file a joint return may exclude up to 500000 uh, of the gain if either spouse meets the two-year ownership requirement. Either. No. Oh, I was wrong. Not and. Either. Uh, both spouses must meet the two-year re requirement. So both spouses have to live in it for two years, the property. And neither spouse excluded a gain from a prior sale or exchange of principal residence within the last two years. So, okay, I remember the question here. Yeah. Um, I think it's uh, our girlfriend that lives down in OB. I forget what she goes by. Did she drinks anything that's wet besides <laughs> gasoline <laughs> it's so i'm not remembering her name either remember she's like hunt hunting for a husband to save money in taxes yeah oh hey, gidget. gidget gidget right that's right okay so uh, and i think hey do i have to marry this guy for two years to sell right. my house so both spouses have to be living in the house for two years so the 121 tax exclusion is on your primary residence so you have to live in the house two out of the last five yeah as your primary, as long as you lived in the house two out of the last five years, you qualify for five hundred thousand dollars if you're married. If you're married, right? Two hundred fifty thousand if you're single. Correct. So the rules state that if let's say I'm married to Gidget for a day, but I've lived there two out of the last five. Yes. And we file a joint return that year. Do I get the five hundred? I believe so. She's and, lived with me for and, two years, but we haven't been married for two years. Yeah, I think that's fine. In, in fact, I think you could sell the property and mail and marry on December 31st because it's what your status is on the tax return, which would be married. Interesting. Yeah. So you thinking about something with Gidget? No, I'm already. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, sorry. Sorry, Gidget. Uh, See, she said you were confusing her on the TV show, not wearing your ring. Now you're confusing her even more. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, Mary. So I know for context, I bought my house four years ago. My wife and I married a little later. She is not on title or the mortgage, which I pay. That sounds familiar, Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> Can you relate to that? <laughs> no, I can't. You can't. No, a friend of mine. You've can. heard that. A friend, a neighbor Got it. talks to me all the time about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> but we both could say, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> but we have both lived here since then, and uh, well, probably for at least a few more years. We had no special reason to put her on title until driving, okay, um, in a rental car, and while not drinking, a hum. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm missing something here. No, I think they were driving in a rental car, and they heard me say misinformation oh so you blew the, you blew I, Rock, rocco I, up i blew up their trip got it and heard this mention on your podcast of a title requirement we expected to sell in the next few years and realized more than five hundred thousand dollars in appreciation by then do i really need to put her on title to benefit for the full five hundred thousand dollar exemption no don't uh, listen to me. Uh, we have been married finally jointly and both live here as our only residents in 2019 we love the devil out of the podcast we love the devil out of it i love that yeah that's right especially as it keeps our newborn baby asleep in the back seat <laughs> that i'm not surprised <laughs> and us look eagerly toward the future upon the front uh all right 
your fan Rocco. P.S. I have no moral or um amorous objection. <laughs> thank you. Amorous it's a little strange word. Yeah, but... Objection to putting my wife on title. Uh, but NYC co-op rules and mortgages might turn into a huge hassle. Um, all right. Well, yeah, Rocco, good news. Good news or bad news? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> You're all good. You don't have to put her on title. All right. Great question. Uh, thanks for keeping Big Al. We, we used to do a segment called Stump Big Al. I think Rocco <laughs> just stumped Big Al. So it certainly <laughs> did. Well, we got this real special picture here from our boy Jay from Raleigh. Oh. We he ser- called himself Jetta Jay in his email. Wow. Is that what we called him? No, <laughs> but he drives a Jetta. That's why. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he's the one that's infatuated with Jettas, right? He's yeah, I think so. His whole life. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. he sends us a picture in the Speedo. Yeah. And so that's what we guessed, and we were right. I was like, we get all sorts of goodies here on your money or wealth. He goes, yeah, I'm just sitting at my condo pool listening to y'all read my email on the podcast. Is You described I'm wearing my Speedo with my earbuds in, drinking my Corona. Um, just as you imagine. Just imagined. as we imagine. Yep. Uh, you guys certainly did make me laugh while you were reading my email, my spitball, my annuity question. Seriously, though, I do want to thank you for giving me another perspective when looking at returns of my annuities. I'm still deciding whether I should sell them or take the distributions, obviously, a work in progress. Lastly, I heard you say that the email you read before mine from eDog included a photo, so I wanted to do the same. Thank you very much, Jay. Very beautiful photo. Yeah. Looking good, brother. That's what retirement looks like. I, well, I, I can't love wait it. to get there. And Jay's in shape. Yeah. He's, he's stacked. He's, he's, he's a rock. He, he listens to our <laughs> podcast while he's, he's working, he's working out. out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right. Is that it, Andy? We done? That is it. Yep. Okay. Thanks for uh, all your emails again this week. Uh, keep them coming. We'll keep spitballing. And uh, we'll see you next time. Show's called Your Money Well. Dog photos we do share in the podcast show notes on occasion. But for the sake of Jetta J's privacy, we won't post his Speedo photo. All right. So real quick before we end for the day, Big Al, we've finished our sixth annual YMYW podcast survey. So that means we have to choose a winner for the $100 Amazon e-gift card. Wow. So we've done this six years in a row. It seems like we just did it. So I guess another year's pass is what you're telling me. Every August. That's the time. Okay. Well, this is uh, this is an exciting time then. Yes, exactly. So give me a number between 1 and 52. <laughs> 1 and 52, huh? Okay. I will do 33. All right. Congratulations to KRC. KRC is the winner of our $100 Amazon e-gift card. KRC, thank you so much for uh, filling out the sixth annual YMYW podcast survey. Yes, KRC, uh, congratulations. And it just so happens I was 33 years old when my son was born. So good thing you're number 33. Is that how you picked the number? That's how I picked it. Nice. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you, Big Al. Uh, My pleasure. KRC, check your email for that Amazon e-gift card. Convertible Mustangs and workout podcasts in the derail, so stick around. Help new listeners find YMYW by telling your friends about the show and by leaving your honest reviews and ratings for Your Money, Your Wealth in Apple Podcasts and any other podcast app that accepts them. Your Money, Your Wealth is presented by Pure Financial Advisors. Click the Get an Assessment button in the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com or call 888-994-6257 and schedule a free financial assessment in person at one of our seven offices around the country or online at a date and time convenient for you no matter where you are. Chances are one of the experienced financial professionals on Joe and Big Al's team at Pure will be able to identify strategies to help you create a more successful retirement. Pure Financial Advisors is is a registered investment advisor. This show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full and informed investment decision. Convertible Mustang, I'll be No, out. that's cool. I, I had a 2004 red convertible. <laughs> Love that car. Oh. I had a 97. No, sorry, 87 convertible Mustang. Really? Oh. Yeah. You ever had one, Joe? A uh, convertible Mustang? Yeah. No, I have not. Well, you haven't uh, hit your... Uh... <laughs> I haven't hit my peak <laughs> age yet. <laughs> uh, I had mine when I was in high school, so... Uh, yeah, it's either high school or when you turn 55. Yep. Uh, yeah, midlife crisis could be 45 to 55. Yep. Uh, believe me. Uh, sometimes I feel it. <laughs> Get it. I mean, Ryan works out all the time. He listens to heavy metal, not your money or wealth. Yeah. <laughs>
Come on, push it. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> you know, I get on the Peloton about four days a week, big Al. Yeah. And I listen to podcasts. Which so one? I can see. Yeah. Okay. I listen to the rewatchables. I don't know that one. Yeah. Um see I'm I come I, I like them. I'm a movie buff, you know. Oh, I can watch okay. movies. Okay. And that's how you know so much about movies. Yeah, so they can you listen about, to podcasts all day. Yeah, they <laughs> talk about you know different movies and things like that. So Got I it. listen to okay. uh the rewatchables. I listen cool. to um a couple sports. I got it. Yeah. Get y'all pumped up. Yeah, I'm not just you know, that's the only time that in the car is the only time I can listen to it. Free time. Yeah. So I'm I'm with Derek. Okay. Or Rocco. What's his name? Rocco? Rocco. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just getting jacked. <laughs>